Welcome yeah. into the August 9th episode of the Locked on Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. The World Junior Championships begin today. The continuation tournament from this past winter, which was wiped out by the Omicron COVID variant. So we'll help tee up that tournament for you because I don't know about you, Dave. kind of came out of nowhere for me. And I woke up yesterday and was like, oh, yeah, that starts tomorrow. Huh. Should probably talk about it on the podcast. So we're going to do that. And a big signing in the Atlantic Division. We'll tell you who it is, and we'll talk about it on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, one stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcast from, via audio format, you can also now catch us up on video on YouTube if you haven't already. Check us out, Lockdown Leafs on YouTube. Hit subscribe, and uh, we'll really appreciate that. And leave a comment down below as well, and and, and leave a, a like on this video. It really helps uh, kind of with the algorithm and boost our presence, and uh, we're trying to grow this thing along with, you know, the rest of Leafs Nation. We want everybody to uh, to to you know, hop on to the Locked On Lease bandwagon with us. Um, so today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. And actually, I believe there are some lines for the World Junior Championships uh, over at Bet Online. So you can go ahead, you can make some wagers over there on those. But before we get into the World Junior Championships, I want to quickly touch on something that happened in the Atlantic Division yesterday. A big signing, massive signing, you could say, happened. It wasn't Nazem Kadri. Patrice Bergeron returned to the Boston Bruins. Yes, I. Uh, it will ever. We all kind of knew. That's the weird thing, Dave. Was this not reported like a month ago that Bergeron was signing back with the Bruins? Why did it feel like this had already happened? Either one of like, yeah, I I thought like the contract was pretty much done a while ago. I don't know if it was just they were trying to figure out the bonus stuff because half of his. Half of his contract is salary and the other half is bonuses. So I don't know if that yeah. was the the deal part of it or were they waiting for another shoe to drop potentially and they had to wait for this to make this announcement. I don't know. And then Krejci also coming back. Like that's just, it's almost just like they're bringing the band back together. Well, yeah. I mean, they bring back David Krejci. So the deals are Krejci one-year deal, $1 million. And then Patrice Bergeron, it's technically a five million dollar one year contract, but only two and a half million of it is base salary, and then, like you said, an additional two and a half million is performance bonus. But because they've done it that way, um, only two and a half million of it is the AAV this season. And then, if he reaches those bonuses, that other two and a half million will go on to next year's um, AAV. It'll go on to next year's cap. So. I mean, I guess it's kind of a creative way to try and skirt right underneath that salary cap and and still be able to pay Bergeron somewhat what he's worth. I mean, we're talking about the guy who's a reigning Selkie champion and uh, the guy who is no doubt the still at the top of his game in terms of being a defensive specialist uh, at the forward position, clearly coming off of his greatest defensive season of all time, according to most analytical uh, data. But the interesting thing here is what this tells me based on the structure is that this is an all in season for the Boston Bruins, right? Krejci signing for one year, Bergeron signing for one year. They're eating into next year's cap in order to bring back Bergeron at a, at a, a digestible AAV at two and a half million leads me to believe that this is an all or nothing season for the Boston Bruins. It has to be right. Like the, this isn't a team that's getting any younger. They have a, you know, like I was really puzzled when you, you know, we bring in uh, 
some of the guys that like some of the moves they've made doesn't scream to me about a team that's ready to rebuild, but also doesn't scream as a team that's ready to take the next step. Like Hampton's Limholm was brought in uh, in that trade, and then right away he signs that eight year deal. Yeah, right. Uh, McAvoy is signed to his uh, to his uh, big extension. Uh, so like those those two guys are in for the long haul. But then outside of them, like going past in a few years, you know, Pasternak is going to be a, is a pending uh, unrestricted free agent. Marshawn has three more years left. Taylor Hall has three more years left. Like they got a bunch of guys who like the window, in my opinion, ends when a lot of these contracts are done. It, that's that's the feeling I get. Unless they're going to find a way to retool, keep the window come somewhat open, and find ways to you know cycle some newer, younger players in while letting these other guys go. Some thought that potentially it was a landing spot for Nazem Kadri. Now with them bringing back both Krejci and uh, Patrice Bergeron, I'm not sure I see that happening. You know, bringing Kadri in as well. Um, but I, I, to me, it's, it, it's not that it's done when those, like all these contracts are done. It's what Bergeron's deciding to hang them up. In my opinion, Bergeron leaves that team's done, right? That team is long gone and they whiffed on so many. Uh, remember that draft, uh, 2015, they had three draft picks in a row and they whiffed on all three of them. One of the greatest drafts in modern day history. And they came away with nothing out of those three picks, um, who they end up taking in that draft anyway? It was like I'm, I'm, picking, I'm just literally picking that up right now. So they had the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th overall pick. Yeah, it's like Zaboral was Zaboral, one of them. Brusque, and Zachary Senishin. Oh, Zach Senshin, yeah. Senshin. So I'm not even sure is with the team anymore. The best, so the like, best part is like literally the three picks right after that were all oh, quote Matt unquote. Marzell, Kyle Connor, Thomas Shabbat. Right, it was That's, those two players. Yeah, literally in yeah. that order. Yeah, exactly. Like that, so they, that, whiffed, they whiffed on that draft, and that's why they're they don't they can't retool because those are were supposed to be the guys who are supposed to, you know, recuperate and be your next wave after Bergeron and Krejci and uh, you know Marshawn kind of aged out and and Zidane Chara also aged out, but they whiffed on all three of those picks. It was so embarrassing. I mean, I guess DeBrusque is with the team, but like even, you know, he's no Barzell. He's no Kyle Connor. He's no Thomas Shabbat. He's not a Brock Besser. He's not a Karol Kaprizov. Go look at the back half of that draft. Legitimately, I'm not sure DeBrusque is a first rounder in this draft if he did a redraft today. And he was taken with a top 15 pick, one of three in a row that they whiffed on. Uh, but anyways... That's the reason why I think that this is all in season. Like, I don't, you know, the three years that's left on Taylor Hall's deal and Brad Marshall, I, they're not going to be competitive in those seasons. Not Stanley Cup competitive at least. Could they potentially try and battle for a wild card spot? Maybe, perhaps. But, I mean, as Masai Ujiri famously said, you know, playing for what, right? If you're not in contention to win a championship, then what are you, what are you doing here? Make yourself, you know, tank. And then rebuild as quick as possible um, if that's, you know, what you want to try and do. And the ch- goal is to win a championship. But I think that this year, though, they'll be OK. Like, ultimately, I, I think that they'll still be a competitive playoff team. I know every year the Bruins are kind of that team where they say, ah, maybe this year they take a step back. But I, for some reason this season, like, I feel more confident in in them that they're just going to continue to steamroll. And if you look at the expected numbers, they were top five in scoring chances and top five defensively last season and got a little unlucky. So I even think this is a team that could do a little better than they did last year and be a lot more competitive within this division. Yeah, I think when you look at the Atlantic, like everyone's talking about how it's going to be a murderer's row. Well, it's going to be. It could be very well. It only can be a murder's row if the teams that are expected to take that next step actually do take the next step. And if Boston gets back into the race, like, you know, there's, there's, we know where Tampa is going to be. We know where Florida is going to be. We know where the Leafs should be. After that, that's where you have a bit of the chess match there, right? Boston should be, I mean, they were the first wild card team. They had 107 points. That's a pretty good season for, any team, right? It's just a matter of 
is there a team that can challenge them? I, I don't so, know. Like, so I have I wrote down a little mini power ranking for the Atlantic Division. Would you like to hear it? We can. I know we're gonna do like our power ranking and go in depth in them a little bit later in the off season, like as the new season approaches. But would you like to hear a little sneak peek of what my ranking is at the very least? Let's have it. Because there's one team who I have that might surprise you for how low I have them. Okay. So I have Montreal coming in at eight, Buffalo at seven, Detroit at six, Ottawa at five. I have the Florida Panthers at four. That doesn't surprise me. I, I find Boston, Toronto, and Tampa. Like if you're looking at the full team roster, we talked about this when they made the Matthew Kachuk trade. That gutted. They're a good part of like, you got rid of a top line player in Huberto. Yep. You bring in Kachuk. That's kind of a one for one swap there. But they got rid of a top pair defenseman. Yeah. You lost your top pair defenseman and you don't have a guy or really anyone that can really Step back up. up. Yeah. Right. And I think there might be more moves they have to make to try to figure that out. And who, like, they're a very forward heavy team, but defensively, I don't think it's there. So that's going to be, I think Tampa exploited something with, the way that they play in the playoffs. Yep, absolutely. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this division um, kind of stacks up. And I'll go further into the, my analysis when we do our power ranking episode in a couple of weeks. But um, I, I just like with these signings that firmly put Boston back into three. I think before I had them behind like Ottawa in like fifth place, but then with these rankings, like or with these signings, you got Bergeron coming back. Krejci, I'm not expecting a whole lot from, but like Bergeron, to me, that just, boom, they're right back into the mix, man, right back into the mix. And if it does end the way that I think it will, the way that my rankings have it ending, it's a Leafs-Bruins first-round matchup, by the way, which scares me, but I think it's what the Maple Leafs need, man. <laughs> like Ultimately, it's what they need to play the to- dragon. Lay the dragon, get over the hump, and then go on a long run. But we've got plenty of time to kind of go over that over the next few weeks. Um, But what starts today, David, is the World Junior Championships really just came out of nowhere. Honestly, it did. I forgot all about it until like this weekend. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's coming up this weekend. Like, I, I was talking with with Julia Tashery, my co-host at Leafs Lunch. I'm like, oh, what are you up to? She's like, oh, I'm on my way to Edmonton for the World Juniors. I'm covering it, doing rings. I'm like, oh, that's right. That's happening. Awesome. Like, I completely forgot about it. But uh, on the other side, we're going to help kind of uh, preview, tee up the tournament a little bit, tell you uh, who is returning for Team Canada and who is not, because it's not the same team that was there uh, during uh, Christmas and New Year's of last year. A lot of guys decided not to come. So there's some new players, some new fresh blood on this squad. We'll tell you who they are and also some other players that we'll be watching that we're excited to watch in this tournament. Uh, So all that coming up on the other side. But before we get into any of that, Dave, I want to tell you about uh, one of today's show sponsor, and it's our, our, our next partner. They have a product that I use literally all the time, every day. I started taking AG1. It's Athletic Greens. I took this. I wanted to boost my immune system, and I really wanted to just start getting a lot healthier. Now, I've been on this thing for about six weeks, and I I absolutely love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has kind of a mild, tropical taste that I actually look forward to drinking each and every morning. So what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, uh, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging. It is lifestyle-friendly whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all of the different supplements yourself, and you're investing in the all-in-one nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens has over 7,000, 7,000 five-star reviews recommended by professional athletes trusted by leading experts in health, such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. And for every purchase, we donate to organizations helping to get nutritious foods to kids in need, including the No Kid Hungry here in the USA. In 2020, 
Athletic Greece donated over 1.2 million meals to kids in the year of 2020. And here, you can make it very easy for you guys. Athletic Greece is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. That's athleticgreens.com slash NHL nhl network and to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance welcome back into the locked on at least podcast i'm mike de stefano i've got david morisuti here with me today and uh we're going to be teeing up the world junior championships and uh, for those who i guess just kind of forgot the World Juniors didn't finish last year. Uh, COVID outbreak due to the Omicron variant kind of swept the entire tournament. They canceled it, postponed it, and they said, well, we'll get back at it in August. Uh, so here we are. We're, we're back at it. It, it really snuck up and, and hit us like a sack of potatoes. But uh, here it is. It starts today, August 9th. Um, I probably should have checked to see what the schedule is going to be like. I will in just a moment for you. But uh, in terms of the difference in what we saw in uh, December and January and what we're going to see this year, so A, that the Canadian team is vastly different. Actually, a lot of these teams are are, are fairly different because some guys just they plan on going to their NHL training camps or their AHL camps and they don't want to get injured ahead of training camp and uh, risk not making the team so guys like Owen Power, Shane Wright, Cole Perfetti, Dylan Genther, Jake Neighbors, Maverick Bork, Justin Sordif and then Caden Gooley all not returning um, that were on the team back in the winter time. Uh, the newcomers that are coming to the team, if you have the graphic, I guess you can kind of throw that up. This is the full team that is going to be there for Team Canada. Um, Connor Bedard, Will Call, Elliot Disnoyer, or no, Disnoyer. Will Dufour is a newcomer. Um, he had an outstanding, um, uh, whatchamacallit, David, where the – Memorial Cup, that's it. Yes. He had an outstanding Memorial Cup where I think he scored like seven, eight, maybe nine goals in the tournament. He was unreal. He had a four-goal game. It was unbelievable. Tyson Forster, also a newcomer uh, to the team. Nathan Gaucher, a newcomer. Ridley Gregg will be there. Kent Johnson uh, is joining. He was with the team last year. He's somebody I'm really looking forward to watching, by the way. Riley Kidney, Mason McTavish, Zach Ospachuk is a newcomer to the team as well. Brennan Othman, Josh Waugh, and then Logan Stankoven. So those are the forward group that makes up Team Canada defensively. They've got Lucas Cormier, uh, Damon Hunt, Carson Lambos, Ryan O'Rourke, Donovan Sabrango, Ronan Seeley, Jack Thompson, and Oli Zellweger are making the team. Um, I don't believe, I think Jack Thompson might be the only newcomer uh, on that list. Actually, on the blue line? Uh, yeah, Del Mastro is not on this list, actually. He should be, though. Yeah. Uh, he should be I, on this list. I didn't oh, know you know what? Damon Hunt got hurt, and Del Mastro's filling in for Damon Hunt. Yeah. Yes, so that's that's why. He wasn't originally named to the team. That's right. Uh, so Ethan Del Mastro also will be uh, with this club. And the goaltenders, Brett Boshu, Sebastian Kosa, and Dylan Geran. So that is the team uh, that will be representing Canada at the World Junior Championships. David, uh, your thoughts on uh, that roster? Yeah, I just... If you see our little ticker at the bottom here, these are the who is in and who is out. It's going a little faster than I wanted it to go, but yeah. it, you know what? It's going to be exciting because maybe there's going to be some guys that you wouldn't expect to be playing in this tournament that are getting the opportunity. Like, unfortunately, we don't get to see Shane Wright. We don't get to see Cole Freddy. We don't get to see, you know, you uh, don't power at a hat trick. Yeah, Owen Power. Like, you don't get to see. You don't get to see the the you know, top top players. Kenny Gould was the captain in in the winter. Yeah, like that's that's a significant loss for Canada. But you still have Connor Bedard. I yeah. I I can't wait. Like this kid is going to be worth every minute watching him on the ice. Mason McTavish is also another guy that really 
really has stepped up in terms of you know where he is now. You brought up Kent Johnson, who could potentially be a line mate for Johnny Gaudreau if he uh, does well for the Columbus Blue Jackets in camp and in this tournament. I think that he's got something to prove there as well. I I, I I'm very curious about I with Canada. It's going to be the defense. Yeah, not a lot of. Big, like you lose Owen Power and you lose Caden Gooley, like that's your. I think they were the top pairing, if I'm not mistaken, or they were made up the top four. Like that, that's a significant loss to that back end. So, very curious to see how the other guys do perform. A lot of guys that we don't really hear a lot about. Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to this this tournament. I mean, it's. I know there's been a lot to, about going on with Hockey Canada and whether this tournament should have been held in Canada and all those things. But for the players' sake, there's a lot lot to keep an eye on with what they're doing on the ice. And a lot of guys are trying to, you know, especially those who are later draft picks with their with their NHL clubs, trying to get themselves into a good position heading into training camp. Yeah. Like, I know that Jack Thompson was a, a mid-round pick, so was Riley Kidney. Um, Will Dufour was a fourth or fifth round pick for the Islanders. And, you know, these guys are all getting opportunities now because those top draft picks, the powers, the rights, the perfettis, the Jake neighbors of the world um, are not going to be um, with the with Team Canada this year. Um, they decided to kind of move on to their pro careers, I suppose, and try and get ready for training camp as opposed to uh, trying to win gold for for Team Canada. Uh, but that's OK. No, that's OK. That's all on them. They have that right to do whatever they want to do. And uh, I still think that Canada is definitely still the team to beat at this tournament. Uh, One other quick note, no Russia or Belarus. Um, So obviously with the war still ongoing, uh, you know, Russia and Belarus have been sanctioned from all double IHF events. And that includes the world junior championships, even though they were there in December and January for the original date of the tournament, they will not be here at this tournament. So um, although Mekve Mechkov, who is probably the player that everybody was most looking forward to watching, the young Russian who could challenge Bedard for number one overall in this upcoming draft, he got injured anyway, so he wouldn't be at the tournament. But uh, no Russia, no Belarus. So that is something that also is vastly different from uh, the tournament that was originally scheduled for December and January. Um, As for the games that start tonight, I'll let you know exactly uh, how the schedule will work for Canada. uh, And then I'll let you also know how the schedule works out tonight for the how the games kind of start out uh, with Canada not, not playing their first game until tomorrow. They play Latvia tomorrow. Um, that'll be at 8, no, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern time. For those of us, they had 6 p.m. Eastern time. And then on the 11th, they play Slovakia again, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And then they play the games at 6 p.m. Tournament. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, all the Canadian games going to be at 6 p.m. Uh, they got Czech Republic or Czechia, sorry, Czechia on August 13th. And then they got Finland on August 15th. And then that does it for um, their round robin game. So they've got Finland, Czechia, uh, Slovakia, and Latvia as their four round robin games before getting into the playoff rounds where hopefully they take on the Americans. So uh, excited for the tournament to start, and I'm excited about some of the players. But before we dive into some of the players, not only least prospects, but some of the other great prospects that are going to be in this tournament uh, starting tonight, why don't you tell the good folks about one of our favorite show sponsors, Built Bar? Yep. If you haven't tried the Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourselves of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? It's a brand new flavor out right now. It's- Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again and introduced a great new flavor that provides that chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, covered in 100% real chocolate. And if you're looking for all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it and get the health benefits, then I don't know why you're not ordering uh, the Built Bar Puffs flavor of cookie dough chunk. They're only 160 calories and have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to built.com to snack a box, snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place and just 
keep it for yourself. Usually that's what I try to do. Like all built bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty chocolate covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. And they make, they're made with many great health benefits, including collagen proteins, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. You're going to love the new flavor over at built bar. So make sure you go to built.com to get your order in right now and to sweeten the pot just a little bit. Use the promo code locked 15 to get 15% off your order. So that's promo code locked 15 to get 15% off at built.com. Welcome back into the locked on these podcasts. I'm Mike DeStefano. We got Dave Morissuti alongside with me. We're your hosts here at Locked on Leafs. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and also subscribe if you're listening via audio format because we got podcasts coming to you three times a week until we hit to training camp and it's daily coverage Monday through Friday, previews, games, whatever you want, trade speculation. We got it all and we'll be providing it all season long. And we're even going through the off season three times a week. So definitely you're not going to want to miss all of our content. So not only hit subscribe, but also maybe hit the notification bell. So you know that when we drop new content for you every uh, single day. All right. Um, So why don't we go through some of the players who Mm. we're excited to watch here. Uh, at this tournament so we talked about a lot of the canadians but obviously they're also a lot more terrific um young hockey players at this tournament that aren't on team canada and that's why it's gonna be such a fun tournament because it's it's you know they're not just gonna steamroll everybody uh it's gonna be difficult there's some really quality quality teams and players so why don't we go through them let's start with the with the the maple leafs players though so there are three maple leafs players that are going to be at the tournament matthew nyes uh the second round pick from last year everybody knows all about matthew nyes if you're listening to this podcast you are very much a a diehard leafs fan um if you're seeking out a a maple leafs podcast and you know about matthew nyes this kid's an absolute animal he's going to be a stud for the americans and and be a catalyst for that club so i'll be excited to see Matthew Nyes here. Topi Nimala, a defenseman for Finland, um, also a, a great offensive defenseman, and, and he'll be able to, I'm hoping, put on a show uh, for Finland like he, he did last season. I think he'll do it again this year. And then also Roni Hirvinen, another player for the, the Finnish club, uh, a pivot for them, who I'm hoping can, uh, you know, a little bit older, maybe a little bit bigger over an off season. Maybe he can have himself a heck of a tournament as well. Uh, which of these three are you most excited to watch here, David? Yeah, I, I mean, it's easy to say Matt Nyes, but I'm actually really looking forward to see Topi Niemela because this is a guy that we're hoping is closer to joining the Leafs organization. Maybe not this season, but the following season where, you know, he's still very young, but he's got a, he's accomplished quite a bit throughout his uh, career. You know, he was a top defenseman at last year's chairman, as you mentioned. He had 32 points in 48 games a season in Liga. Like that's pretty good for a young men's defenseman. League. That's in a men's league, right? Yeah. Like that, I, I'm, you know, we've, we talked so much about how the Leafs need that right shot defenseman. They need to add some skill to that right side. This is a guy right there. I'm going to, I'm going to be watching quite a bit of, um, I'm actually going to be writing, uh, for a couple of days, three stars of like the day for Sportsnet. So I'll be, hopefully Topi Niemela will come on my radar a few times doing, uh, when I do those. I'm sure he will. As could Irvinen potentially, and definitely, I'd be shocked if Matthew Nyes doesn't uh, become a th- three star at least once throughout the tournament. All right, moving uh, around the world, I suppose. Uh, what other teams or what other players would you say are you most interested in getting a glimpse at at this year's World Junior Championships that aren't either Leafs uh, prospects or Canadian prospects? Uh, one is Logan Cooley. You know. This is a guy who's who decided that he's going to go and play for the University of Minnesota, which means he's a potential line mate with Matthew Nyes, mm-hmm. right? So I, I'm curious to see how that uh, that dynamic works. I didn't see the U.S. lineup 
Uh, I didn't see their warm up game and see if they they did play end up playing together. But you know, there was some surprise when Arizona decided to take Cooley at third overall instead of Shane Wright. So yeah. I'm curious. I mean, he he's a phenomenal player. That that's not the reason why I'm surprised. It's just with Shane Wright being a projected first overall pick. So I'm curious to see how how does Logan Cooley perform in, uh, in the tournament in this tournament. Uh, other than him, you know, there there are quite a few guys. Like what another one on uh, Finland, Brad Lambert. We kind of brought him up as a potential target for the Leafs in the draft. He was actually mm-hmm. picked up by Winnipeg. They traded with uh, up with the Rangers and they took him late end of the first round there. So he's a guy I I, I I'm I'm curious to see how he does. Brock Faber, I've uh, you know read a lot about him. He's a guy I'm curious of. William Wallander for you know Sweden defense. William love- Wallander, you gotta um, know it's 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 a, they do the V out there, don't they? Yes, I yes, you are right on that. I'm not versed in the Swedish ways. There you go. Um, yeah, there, there's, there are quite a, you know, I know there's a lot of players that have pulled out of this tournament, but there are still a lot of quality players to watch in this tournament. And those are just a few outside of the Canadian team that I'm looking forward to watching. Yeah, I, a couple more that I'll add that I'm excited to see. Atu Ratu, I'm really excited to see. Him. He was somebody in last year's draft. He was expected to be like a top five pick. And then he didn't have a great draft season. Ended up kind of bouncing around between a couple of clubs. Didn't put up the production that he was expected to. And then ended up going in the second round last year, late in the second to the Islanders. And then had an okay C draft season. I'm curious what another off season of work, what Atu Ratu can bring and if he can really have himself a tournament amongst his his age group and really you know put his status as which was once considered to be a top prospect put that back on the table with an exceptional tournament so Finland I think Finland's gonna have a good squad man I mean we talked about the Leafs guys Nimala and Irvinen but also I mean Atu Ratu Brad Lambert Joachim Kemmel who was a first round pick this year to the Nashville Predators. I think that he's going to be an outstanding player as well. And they got a decent goaltender I was reading up um, that also kind of goes along with the other studs that they have on their team. So I'm, I'm going to be tuned into a lot of these Finnish games because there's some real quality players. Thomas Bordalo on uh, USA. He's somebody who's a Michigan uh, university product. We know how very talented that program has been he played at eight games i want to say with the san jose sharks last season um after he turned pro so he's going to be eligible still to play in this tournament so he's going to go and get a chance to star with that with that team did you say jesper wallstadt the swedish netminder he was another one that was on my list that i meant to i, I yeah. think he's 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 touted as the top goaltender in this tournament yeah he is he's touted as a top goaltending prospects in general, like I'm pretty sure at this point he's he's surpassed um, Yaroslav Askarov as top goaltender that's you know affiliated like top goaltending prospect outside of the NHL. Um, so I, I'm I'm excited to watch him and see if he can live up to those high expectations for Sweden. Jonathan Lekarimi is a guy who went in the first round this year to the Vancouver Canucks. Really talented player. Uh, and then, you know, the Slovakian kids too, like Sima Nemec, David Juracek. Um, Slavkovsky is not going to be at the tournament. Oh, wait, is he? Uh, he might be at the tournament, actually. I didn't check. Let me let me double check to make sure if Slavkovsky is going to be there or not. Because if he doesn't, if they don't plan on putting him on the Canadians right away, why wouldn't they put him on the roster? Mm-hmm. Now that I think about that. Let me make sure. Uh, no, it does not look like Slavkovsky's on the team. Okay. So I read, I did read that properly, but Oliver yeah. Stumble is on the team. Uh, Dvorsky's going to be there. There was one other player who I was excited to, uh, to get a glimpse at on that squad or else, uh, you know what? Now that I'm taking a look at this lineup, all the kids who got drafted for Slovakia that were there last year, uh, all are not on the team. They're all kind of moving on and getting ready for training camp. It looks yeah, like I'm noticing as well. Yeah. So, oh, that's a, that's tough because Slovakia, they thought they were going to have themselves uh, 
a tournament last year and and they did they looked really good you know early on in that in that tournament and looks like all those kids um who ended up going the first round they had what three or four first rounders in this year's uh in this year's draft and uh none of them uh returning for the continuation of the tournament which is kind of unfortunate for Slovakia but uh c'est la vie so I guess eh, Slovakia might not be as um, must watch as maybe you would have originally thought compared to what they were back in December. But lots of great talent. Uh, I love this tournament every year. Do you do you feel weird that it's in in August though? Like as opposed to Christmas, like usual. Like it does feel yeah, like, it off. like it is very off. Like there's not nearly as much intrigue as there typically is. Like I said, it was like yesterday or, or this past weekend. I'm sitting here. I'm thinking to myself. Oh yeah, the World Juniors are are coming up this week. Whereas typically, like I look forward to this tournament every year. I don't know why; it just seems like it's so out of the blue right now. We're but, we're just know, because we're not conditioned to think about watching hockey in August. Those who watch like the 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 Helinka, like I'm in Helinka, that's like the big tournament during the summertime. That a lot of those who are, especially those who are into the the drafting and scouting uh department there but yeah like i'm thinking watching the nhl around christmas time I'm like i don't have enough hockey feed me more hockey i need that fix world juniors christmas time nothing better on boxing day after you've eaten a crap ton of food on christmas day you're going into boxing day and you're just sitting in a cozy spot in your house to watch the world juniors like that's what i feel like not Oh, it's summertime. Let me stay inside to watch the World Juniors. Like I, yeah, it just doesn't. It doesn't scream to me that same. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people watching because they all. There's a lot of World Junior fans, but yeah, I know this isn't where. This doesn't have the same intrigue or value to me in terms of interest. That I would past seasons. Yeah, luckily I got like a back deck area so I can still kind of sit outside and watch watch the game. I got a TV out there and I got a nice little setup, a uh, little bar sp- spot in the backyard that I can set up post and watch the game. But I, I, I'm i with you. Uh, I also think that, you know, it's, it's a little, uh, it's just totally bizarre that we're watching this tournament in the middle of, in the middle of August. It's just, I don't know. You know, it's it's baseball season. It's the start of football. There's just so much going on, and you just don't think about it. And it randomly came up. And then, you know, for Canadians, a lot of the star power left, like Owen Power, Shane Wright, Cole Perfetti, Genther, Neighbors, Bork, like, you know, their captain, Caden Gooley, just not not playing. So the star power isn't there as much. Although, like, a, there still are a lot of quality players. I mean, hmm. Connor Bedard, I want to watch Connor Bedard. I mean – what this kid was doing last year before the tournament got canceled. Imagine now, like he's seven, eight months older, six. Well, yeah, about seven months, eight months older. Imagine what he's going to be doing now. And he was, and he was lighting it up in the WHL. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, he was. I'm excited. I'm excited. Sure to watch he him. was the youngest player to score 50 in the WHL. I think so. Yeah. Like <laughs> he's going to be worth watching. That's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So, should be fun. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it all goes well. It all does start uh, tonight, um, so you can watch the games. Let's see what the first game is. I think it's on at like noon or something like that. It's two o'clock Eastern. Yes. Okay. Two o'clock Eastern. Czechia and Slovakia, and then the Finns playing at six o'clock with Latvia and Finland. So. You know, hopefully our boys can uh, can can lay a beat down on Lapia because that's that's a good time to to do that. And then the eight o'clock game, no, ten o'clock game. That's late. Ten o'clock game, USA and Germany will uh, will play, and that kind of does it for day one of the tournament. And then, like I said, tomorrow Lapia and Canada at six p.m. Eastern time, uh, and you can watch it all on TSN. All right, that's it for us today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Go ahead, smash that like button. Leave a comment down below about uh, some of the players you're interested in watching at this year's 
World Junior Championships. And are you as invested as you typically are? Let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, we'll be back with another episode on Wednesday, folks. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.